Jose Munoz Cortes was born in Chile in 1950 into a pious Roman Catholic family of Spanish descent. He was a boy of 12 or 13 when passing by the Russian Orthodox Church in Santiago. He was attracted by the sound of singing and went inside. There he became acquainted with Archbishop Leonti of blessed memory, and under his influence Jose was baptized into the Orthodox Church two years later with his mother's consent. Joseph was given his Orthodox name of Joseph the Betrothed, keeper of the Lady Mary. Archbishop Leonti, having accepted Joseph into Orthodoxy, foresaw that by his name Joseph would be made keeper of the Mother of God and the God-Child Christ, this of course foreshadowing his future guardianship of the Merce streaming icon. In the summer of 1982, Brother Joseph went to Mount Athos with a particular interest in visiting some skeets and monasteries, specializing in an icon painting. In the small ski of the Nativity of Christ, Brother Joseph felt an immediate and strong attraction for an icon of the Mother of God, a contemporary copy of the ancient and revered Iverian icon. He was disappointed to learn that it was not for sale, but to his great joy as he was leaving the ski, Abbot Clement unexpectedly handed the icon to him, saying that it pleased the Mother of God to go with him to America. Back in Montreal, Brother Joseph began reading an Agathist daily before the icon. A few weeks later, on November 25th, he awoke and smelled a strong fragrance. The new icon was streaked with myrrh, miraculously emanating from the hands of the Mother of God. For the next 15 years, as myrrh continued to flow from the icon, Brother Joseph devoted himself to its care, accompanying it on numerous trips to parishes all over the United States and Canada, to South America, Australia, and Europe. Everywhere, the Mother of God works miracles, healing souls and bodies, reconciling adversaries, strengthening the faint-hearted, inspiring repentance, and consoling those burdened by grief or misfortune. This applied not only to Orthodox believers, but to many heterodox as well. But where grace abounds, one can expect trials and tribulations, and the difficulties that Brother Joseph endured can only be imagined. Come here, go there. He was criticized for not doing as others wanted. He was offered fantastic sums of money for the icon. He himself lived in monastic poverty, readily giving what he had to those in need, where he bought icons and materials for painting icons. At all times, Brother Joseph tried to be sensitive and obedient to the will of the Mother of God. He was, first and foremost, her devoted servant. He was also faithful in fulfilling the countless requests for prayers that he received, daily commemorating scores of people among whom were several dozen God children. Joseph always knew that to him belonged the feet of martyrdom. For a year before his passing away, the Lord showed him in a nightly vision all the terrible circumstances of his martyrdom, and nevertheless, Joseph considered himself to be unworthy of the crown of martyrdom, and once said outright, I am not worthy of martyrdom. But at the same time, willing or not, he had his entire life been preparing to a martyr's witness. Before the end of the earthly wanderings of Brother Joseph, the clouds over his head became especially dense. He was all the more ready for suffering for Christ and his most holy mother. Then not only Joseph, but many people close to him felt that something terrible was coming. In his last days, people openly watched out for Joseph, literally walked in his footsteps right behind him. Once noticing that he was being followed, Joseph sharply turned and told the spy to his face, You know I'm not afraid of you because my life is in God's hands. At last, the final confessor of Joseph, the elder Clement, openly told him about upcoming difficult trials and tribulations and an unbelievable slander which would attempt to blacken his name and his holy works. He realized that Satan would be tempting Joseph even more because he could not do anything against the likeness of the mother of God and thus would mobilize his forces even more against the keeper of this likeness. In the last months of his life, Joseph said his goodbyes to people, often with tears in his eyes, sometimes doing a full prostration. He asked forgiveness, not explaining anything, of course, but many understood, and those who did not understood after his martyr's death. Jose was tortured and brutally murdered in a hotel room in Athens, Greece, on the night of October 31st, 1997, by several individuals. He had planned to return to Canada the following day to celebrate the 15th anniversary of the appearance of the miraculous appearance of Myrrh on the icon. The case is still unsolved, though several individuals were suspected in the crime. The Myrrh streaming Montreal icon disappeared following Brother Jose's murder. 
and has not been seen since. Over on October 6, 2007, shortly before Blessed Jose's 10th anniversary of his repose, an exact immersed streaming replica of the famous Iverian icon of Montreal appeared in Hawaii, which still, to this day, streams myrrh continuously. May the life and martyric death of this true warrior of Christ be for us a compelling example, and may his memory be eternal. Blessed Jose Munoz Cortez, pray for us. I would not be a puppet.